And I want to go also back uh, to the, uh, the tax credit for the working poor. Mm -hmm. um, and now I wanted to uh, disclaim I am not a CPA. However, <laughs> you're going to find that there are two different ways that, that utilize this part mm -hmm. of the tax code. One is for your children's school. Right. So donate to your children's school still. We're not asking that you redirect funds. Right. You can do both. You can do both. Absolutely. So if you do, uh, uh, you understand the concept if you're already donating to your children's school. If you don't, you should. And then also, um, it definitely uh, go to uh, umom.org um, and uh, uh, grab the contact information and learn how that you can take advantage of the tax credit for the working poor, which is, like you said, what is the range anywhere It's into? $200 maximum for a single adult um, and then $400 for a married couple. Okay, very good. And uh, we provide all those receipts and everything at the end of the year, so you're all set with your CPA. Absolutely, your CPA will be uh, very happy with you, and you will too, because you'll be able to have a, a good feeling that uh, you've been able to do something wonderful, uh, and also that it didn't come out of your own personal pocket, and you can feed your own family at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I, I, at a later time, we may uh, I team up with you to get uh, private businesses involved, sure. um, uh, where they might spot sponsor a donation, mm -hmm. so uh, that, that might be something we could talk about offline and to help beef that up a little bit. Sure. Okay, wonderful. So um, the the next thing that um, uh, we want to uh, talk about uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to uh, talk a little bit more. Uh, you would never realize that social media has a, a huge part to do with nonprofits as well. And when we come back from the break, we are going to talk more about um, uh, the, the applied use of social media and nonprofits. Um, but um, a lot of the reason for giving has to do with the why. And so, so far, we've, we've talked about um, being able to give a place for homeless families to live. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've talked about that they are able to um, receive some of the, the uh, care that they need to improve their lives. Um, when it comes time for education for children and also for the, the, the mothers or the, um, the parents, mm -hmm. um, what are the programs that you have for them? So we have a fully licensed and accredited child development center that, that provides care uh, for free for the families living on our property, um, ages six weeks all the way to school age. Um, so it's like a typical daycare center. It's really cute, and um, we have you know accredited and licensed staff that work with those kids. We do um, assessments on every child when they come in, and we do them every six months to make sure that they're meeting developmentally um, the the goals and expectations. Um, we do see a lot of developmental delays in children that have experienced homelessness, um, and then we also have after school care for those older kids. So the 5 to 11 year olds have an after school program that they can go to, get homework help, they work on activities, we have you know guest speakers and fun things for them to do. And then our teens, which I didn't know this until I started working there, but apparently you're a teen now at 11. Oh. Um, <laughs> we grow up fast. I guess so. <laughs> um, those 11 to 18 year olds, they have their own program we call the Teen Activity Program. And so right. they have a place to go after school. Um, they can hang out with their friends, work on homework. They even started a running club um, recently, so they go on runs together and, and really hopefully have a place um, you know that's positive and that gives them constructive things to do. We just celebrated, in fact, one of our teens moved out this week and is going to U of A on a full scholarship. Uh, yeah, she graduated graduated from Central High School uh, a couple yeah. months ago, and uh, we're just so proud of her, and, and we know that she's gonna go really far. So we have a lot of great success stories out of that teen program. Um, and then for parents, um, unfortunately, one of the things that we see is a lot of parents come into shelter and they don't have a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, they dropped out. We all know Arizona has a huge dropout rate. Um, for high schoolers and um, and so we work with them to get their GED while they're in our program they can meet with um, we have a team of retired teachers who come in a few days a week and meet with them and practice and do tests and and um, we just celebrated four more um, residents who successfully passed their GED tests this past month Amazing. Um, so we're really working on getting that program, you know, getting the adults excited about it because that's really the first step into getting a job where they can support themselves and their family. And that's the, the power of what happens when, when you take two generations together um, and you break the, the the uh, pattern um, right. and a lot of people don't realize how important that is. My father was a, a PhD psychologist and marriage family therapist mm -hmm. and um, 
we I was always grateful for him when he gave perspective and uh, so um, definitely keep that perspective in mind when we come back from the break we're going to uh, talk about uh, the ways that uh, uh, nonprofits get the word out about uh, what, uh, who they are and what they do uh, Michelle's done a really good job with you moms in, in implementing that for cause campaigns and other things so um, make sure you don't go away because uh, this is a major uh, important part of, uh, of both nonprofits and for profits when they team up together. So we'll tune in after the break. Thanks so much for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you in a few minutes.